Hey, good evening, it's a day. So the article I just published turned out to be a little bit longer than expected. So I'm going to make two videos instead of one. So this article pertains to the prophetic update for this week. It's entitled, Come Forth Out of the Clefts to Sing and Shine. The Bride Has Made Herself Ready. In Sol Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10, My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. Come away, my love, O oh, my dove, that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. In Jeremiah 8, 7, we also know, we also read about an appointed time. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane, and the swallows observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. So Song of Solomon speaks of a sequence of events, starting with the winter ending, the flowers appearing on the earth, and the first flowers we know are the almond flowers, the blossoms on the tree. And then the bridegroom speaks to the bride to come forth, to come out of the clefts of the rock, out of the hiding place. He wants to see her and let her hear, let him hear her voice. And nature speaks of the appointed times too. Nature speaks to us in beautiful synchronicity with scriptures and heavenly signs this week. It speaks of the pilgrim bride, which like the storks migrate toward the summer residence. The storks are lifted up over rising thermal winds, having made herself ready for her appointed time to be lifted up home to heaven. As she rests on her way, she is learning to yield to blossoming right where the Lord has her stationed. Ever looking up, desiring the Lord to hasten his word to be performed in his coming before this year's harvest season. The heavens mirrored the wakeful bride's pilgrimage on the ecliptic, heeding the call to shine brightly once a month in sight of her groom's face. As the king planet Jupiter and the sun will join forces in Capricorn this week, this location in the heavens is reminiscent of our groom's redemptive offering on our behalf. We see the Revelation 12 signs man-child, Jupiter, clothed with the sun. As the solar bridegroom and the king planet come together, as we would expect they would, these godly luminaries, to write before the sun is sent down by the Father to call his beloved up. In opposition, we see the full moon bride facing them from within the Cancer constellation, the cattle fold, also known as the resting place for travelers and pilgrims shining forth in her most radiant capacity, shining both her own light, but especially reflecting the light of the group. So the heavens declare this week, and the description is in the text, of course, but I'm not going to be able to show them at the same time. So what I understand the heavens to reflect this week, it is a shining forth of both the bride and the groom. And the other planets and comets uh, appear to play a beautiful supporting role. So on Wednesday, tomorrow, January 27th, the planet Mercury, known as the chief speaker, it was one of the attributes given to Paul, a messenger but also a thief in the Roman pantheon, is going to be highest in the sky. 
and um, location of Mercury is currently in Capricorn. And that reminds us of the Lord's sacrificial atonement, like the first goat on the Day of Atonement, after which the second goat, the scapegoat, was sent off into the wilderness and later pushed off a cliff. In Hebrew culture, a wedding day is regarded as a couple's mini atonement day. So on the next day, that is Thursday, January 28th, we have a full moon. So the moon, the type of the bride, reaches her full phase in Cancer. And Cancer is a constellation of the cattle fold, the resting place for travelers and pilgrims. It is commonly called, this uh, 11th month moon is called the wolf moon. And Thursday, January 28th, sunset, sundown, until Friday, the 29th of uh, January. That is also the feast of Tubi Shavat on the biblical calendar. The new year for the trees, when the almond tree is expected to blossom, and our spiritual first fruits are going to be inspected by the Lord. And since the blood moon tetrads midpoint, in January 2015, it has been exactly six years, and that is the year of blessing, according to Leviticus 25, fruit being brought forth for three years afterward, and that may have profound prophetic meaning. So on the day of the full moon, we have a coinciding of the start of Tuvi Shabbat. And on the 29th, so the 28th and the 29th, the moon will be in Cancer, and that is near the precipice, the beehive. Meanwhile, both Mars and Uranus are found in the constellation Aries, the lamb or the ram. And Mars types conflict and war, and Uranus is a type of Enoch. And we can see how it is positioned to be looking up at Arius's head. And the Enoch types have already encountered Mars or conflict. So by this time, Mars has already progressed further on, on the ecliptic. So the conflict with those emanating um, Enoch, the one who walked with God and was taken, a type of the rapture, that has been overcome. And on the other side of the ecliptic, really close to the sun, so Venus, the beloved, the bright and morning star still, that was an attribute given to Jesus, is still visible in the early morning sky, but it is fading fast. So Venus, the beloved, the morning star, promised to overcomers, is still visible in the morning. And it is the award or the promise given to the overcomers of the church of Thyatira. The Lord speaks about in the letters to the churches in Revelation. And the church of Thyatira is dominated by the Jezebel spirit. And that's what we talked about previously in the video and the article on narcissism and the spirit of control. So we are called to come out of that church, out of that congregation, out of that structure, which is um, characterized by operating underneath the spirit of Jezebel. So Venus starts to fade away in the sun's glare while it is positioned in Sagittarius, the white horse rider or the bowman, but it can still be seen in the morning. Venus conjuncts with Pluto. And Pluto is not visible, um, though it signals the underworld. And while Pluto is hidden from the naked eye, it is when you were are to look up in the early morning and you see Venus, Pluto is about two fingers removed from Venus. So on that same day, Friday, uh, January 29th, so here you can see, by the way, Venus still visible but slightly so in the morning glare so soon that promised morning star to overcomer 
over commerce is going to disappear off the scene, much like Jupiter is now disappearing in the sun's glare. So Friday, January 29th, uh, Jupiter is going to be at solar conjunction. It conjuncts with the sun. And Jupiter, both the king planet, but also the Revelation 12 child, the man child, is going to be clothed with the sun. And this takes place in Capricorn, the atoning sacrifice from which the church is springing forth. So the latter part of the constellation Capricorn, the fish part, is the church springing forth from the redemption by the Lord Jesus. And the sun, the bridegroom, has come out of its chamber, which is the winter solstice in the celestial golden gate, while Saturn, um, typing Cronus or Satan, is nearby, but lost in the sun's glare. It is strategically stationed, though, at the head of the goat. I don't know if I have a picture of that. Oh, Saturn being stationed? No, I don't. Sorry. But Saturn is also stationed near Jupiter and the sun at the neck section of Capricorn. So exactly at the cut throat section. And we shared earlier how the island of Hawaii is shaped as a lamb or a goat. And the Helena slump being exactly at that cutthroat section. So on that same day, Mercury is at perihelion. That means closest to the sun. And I was just pondering and just guessing. This is not a really clear picture to me. Um, it may be the messenger about to be dispatched to call the bride for her final readiness because in the Jewish wedding picture, the best man of the groom will come forth uh, toward her to alert her to the fact that her bridegroom is coming so she can like grab her last things and make sure that she is ready to meet him as she um, um, exits the house and goes out to meet him, right? So the biblical picture is of the bridegroom coming, the messenger going before him, and the bride having made herself ready and watching and waiting for his return is going to go out and meet him halfway. So while Mercury is highest in the sky, the uh, moon is furthest removed from the sun. So that always happens when the moon is full because they are opposite on the ecliptic. And on Friday, January 29th, the moon is actually departing the cattle fold constellation and she enters into Leo the Lion. And that happens at Aljaba or Eta Leonis, and that is exactly at the handle of the sickle. So the head stars of Leo the Lion form a sickle as well. This is the heart star regulus, but the moon will actually conjunct with Eta Leonis or Aljaba, and that is exactly at the sickle hand, handle, sorry. So to me, it resonated with a picture of the harvest starting because we know that the bride is currently working the harvest fields, but a portion of the bride will also be dispatched as heirs of the Lord to work the end times harvest. So if you look at the heavens from the Jerusalem vantage point, you can actually see that exactly about midnight over here, Cephas, that is the constellation of the king, the queen is right next to him, is actually touching down the horizon right on midnight, and that reminded me of the bridegroom being expected at midnight. So I thought that was a beautiful positioning. And here you can see, and these images are, by the way, from timedate.com, so you can type in the vantage point, and I chose Jerusalem, so you can see what they actually see in the heavens. And you can see that Venus is still visible in the early morning, but will soon be lost in the sun's glare. But the final sign is Comet Leonard, and that is also a transliteration of the words Lionheart. And its position in the constellation Booties at the left hand, which is holding a sickle, is confirming the harvest 